Okay, hi guys, welcome to lesson one on this topic, discrete random variables. And so this is a probability topic and it's about a specific type of variable. It has to be random. So that by definition means it's the result of an experiment, something which you can repeat and you don't know what's going to happen. Most importantly, it is discrete. So it can't just take any value. It can only take values from a specific list and they have to be numerical values. So it can't be, for example, the distance thrown uh, by an athlete throwing a javelin, because that can take any value. Um, so just to take an example, if we imagine this dice that I'm colouring in um, on the screen, if you roll that dice, um, the random variable that we're talking about couldn't be um, the colour that you get, because that's not numerical value. But it could be, if you roll it seven times, how many blues you get. That could be, because that's a number. Okay, so notation here, we tend to represent variables by capital letters, so if there's a capital X representing a variable, a specific value will be a lowercase x. And we talk about the probability of x being a specific value, and we use either of these two notations. I prefer the one on the right, just because I'm lazy, but you'll see both of them used. So, let's just try an example. And um, this is about a dice, and when we roll it, what we get, and it's a fair die, so it's a very simple one. But this is to illustrate what a probability distribution is. So when you have to specify what the possible values are and what the probability is for each one. So in the case of a dice, the probability for each outcome is the same. Okay, it's one six if you're talking about a fair dice. Um, so when it asks for a probability distribution, it wants a table like this, just listing all the values for the different outcomes. Um, looking at a slightly more complicated example, uh, we're tossing three coins and we're recording the number of heads. Okay, so heads or tails couldn't be a discrete random variable, but the number of heads is a number, so that can be. Um, so the first thing is a sample space, and this can come in many forms, but what it really means is a list of all the possible outcomes. So here we're going to list the combinations. The first one is done there, three heads. It could be two heads, then a tail, a head, then a tail, then a head and a head, then a tail, then a tail. And there are all the possibilities that start with getting a head. Okay, so we need to count how many start with getting a tails. And so it could be any one of the same four combinations of the last two. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. So that gives us our eight possible outcomes, and they're all equally likely because it's random. So let's do the probability distribution. That means filling in this table. So we think about our eight outcomes, um, how many of them correspond to having zero heads? And it's just that one at the bottom. So one eighth is the probability there. How many of them correspond to having one head? Well, it's those three. So three out of eight. How many correspond to getting two heads? And so on. So we can see that there are, again, three outcomes which correspond to getting two heads. So that's also three eighths. And finally, there's only one way to get three heads. So probability of one eighth. Now the probability function expresses exactly the same information as the probability distribution, but it just does it in a different way. So have a look at this. Um, we have to specify, it could be an, a, a formula for something. In this case, it's quite simple. We say that when x is 0 or 3, the probability is 1 eighth. But when x is 1 or 2, the probability is 3 eighths. And for completeness, we say that for any other value, uh, the probability is 0. Now you'll see later on some examples which involve formulae, but that's a probability function. So another example, we've got a tetrahedral die, so four sides, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, but it's not fair die, it's biased. Um, so the probabilities aren't all a quarter, they're given by this formula k over x. And we don't know what k is, it's just some constant. So if we want the probability distribution, we start by just trying to write it out using the formula. Okay, so we list the outcomes that we can get, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we use this formula here, k over x, to work out the probabilities. So when x is 1, we have k over 1. When x is 2, we have k over 2. And so on, giving us k over 3 and k over 4. Now obviously that's not my answer because I still don't know what k is, so that's not a very useful probability distribution. But I know that these probabilities, all four of them, must add up to 1. So I simply write that down as an equation. k plus k over 2 plus k over 3 plus k over 4 equals 1. 
and all I'm left to do now is solve that work out what k is. Um, so this is just a bit of fractions work, so I'm going to let this run quite quickly. Check that you can do this. I'm putting them all over 12, add the numerators together, we get 25k, and then I simply multiply by 12 and divide by 25 to rearrange, and k is 12 over 25. So now I know what k is, I can take that and substitute it into this table here, and that will give me my final answer, a new version of this table. Okay, so the same values for x, um, but when x is 1, it's just k over 1, so it's just k, 12 over 25. When x equals 2, it's k over 2, so I can just divide the numerator by 2 and get 6 over 25, and in a similar way, I can work out the values for um, 3 and 4 by substituting 12 over 25 in there. I'd pause that if I were you and check that you're happy with those. And then, of course, the final step, which won't get you any extra marks, but it might stop you from losing some marks, is to check that your probabilities add up to 1. And in this case, they do. All right, this is another concept uh, closely related to what we've just been doing. It's called the cumulative distribution function, and it uses the notation f of x. And note that it's a capital F. And what it means is the probability that x is, uh, well, this expression less than or equal to a specific value. So in notation, less than or equal to lowercase x. Okay, and you're used to the cumulative expression from GCSE when you've done cumulative frequency graphs. So uh, let's look at an example. We're tossing two coins and x is the number of heads showing. Okay, so a quick sample space will allow me to work out what's going on. And I'm asked for the cumulative distribution function for the number of heads. Okay, so my three options are zero heads, one head, or two heads. And I can work out the probabilities very simply. Okay, so there's one way to get no heads. There are how many? Let's see, one, two ways to get uh, one head. And then, of course, there's only one way to get two heads, which is one quarter. So those are my probabilities. You could simplify two quarters to a half. It doesn't really matter. Now, to get the cumulative distribution function, well, that's the probability that x is less than or equal to a sp specific value. So the first one, is the probability that it's less than or equal to zero. And that only includes one outcome, which is the outcome of zero. So we get a quarter there. Um, next one is the probability that it's one or less, less than or equal to one. So that includes both of these probabilities. It could be zero or one. So we simply add those together. So a quarter plus uh, two quarters is three quarters. And in the same way, for the last one, it's the probability of it being two or less. Well, that includes all of them. So we actually don't need to add them up. We know that that's going to be one, because it's certain that uh, the outcome will be less than or equal to the largest value. So that's a useful thing. The last value in the table for f of x will always be one. So let's put this into action. We have a cumulative distribution function. So we're not given the probability. We're given f of x. And it's a formula with k in it. And Again, k is some constant that we don't know. Okay, but what we do know is that the three possible outcomes, 1, 2, and 3, 3 is the biggest of those. So f of 3, i.e. the probability that it's less than or equal to 3, must be 1. So we use that fact, and we use the equation that we're given, the formula that we're given, to, to make an equation, and that will help us find k. So substitute x equal 3 um, into that expression and make it equal to 1. And we simply solve to find k. So I multiply by 8, 3 plus k equals 8, and that gives me k equals 5. And a bit like the other question, this now unlocks the rest of the question. So we want a distribution table for the cumulative distribution function. So actually we don't want the probabilities, we just want f of x. So let's see how we can populate this table. Well, now that we know what k is, my formula isn't x plus k over 8 anymore, it's x plus 5 over 8. And we simply use that formula to work out the three values. So substitute x equals 1. 1 plus 5 over 8 is 6 eighths, which of course is 3 quarters. When x equals 2, 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 over 8. And of course, the last one, you can work it out. You can do 3 plus 5 over 8 equals 1, but we already know that that one equals 1. That's the whole point. Now this one's interesting, you get a lot of these in exams, um, f of 2.6, well that's the probability that it's 2.6 or less. 
2.6 is a kind of random decimal somewhere between 2 and 3. We know it can't be anywhere between 2 and 3. So if it's less than 2.6, it could be 2 or 1. So this is really the same as saying f of 2. Um, so we can just read it off from the table as 7 eighths. Finally, to find the probability distribution of x, um, we just take the table that we've just generated and we're going to use the bottom line to let us work out what the probabilities are. Okay, so I'll just populate this with the three uh, cumulative distribution function values that we've got. And the probability of x being 1 is equal to 3 quarters. Now think about that for a moment. That's the same as the probability of it being less than or equal to 1. And that makes sense because it can't be less than. So it's just the or equal to. So these first ones are always equal for f of x and p of x. And that's a useful thing to remember. And for the rest of the values, you simply work your way along the row um, subtracting. So you subtract the value of f of x um, from the one before it. In this case, 7 eighths minus 3 quarters. And that gives you 1 eighth. Then we would go on to do 1 minus 7 eighths, which also gives you 1 eighth. And well, if you're not sure why we do this subtraction, just pause the video and have a think about it. And if you're not sure, ask me in class. Finally, of course, you can check that these values add up to 1. And when they do, we're happy. And that's it.